share my screen. Let's see. Okay, so can everyone see my slides? Just give me a thumbs up, okay. All right, so um, hello again. So today I'm gonna just be talking about uh, Black Lives Matter and the Black church. Um, I was kind of interested in this because I see as Black Lives Matter kind of took shape, there were some um, you know, conflicting ideas within the Black church about the Black Lives Matter movement uh, and the statement that Black Lives Matter. And I also was interested in this because I see within uh, various time points in the Black church, you'll see, um, I guess, just this idea that Black lives matter. Uh, so I just kind of wanted to take a look at that. So in this presentation, I'll be examining the intersection between Black Lives Matter and the Black church. Uh, both the Black church and BLM have played important roles in the fight against racism. Uh, it's important to note that while BLM and the Black church uh, have often worked simultaneously to combat racism, uh, there's sometimes been this conflict between some of the tenets of Black Lives Matter and doctrine in some uh, predominantly Black churches. So what I'm going to first do in my presentation, I'm just going to take a look at briefly the uh, origins of BLM, uh, some of the early origins of the Black church. I'll talk about uh, activism within BLM and activism within the Black church. And then I'll also talk about ways in which uh, a lot of the thoughts in BLM, the organization, and uh, church doctrine diverge. And then I'll just end with a few uh, reflections. So uh, first, let's just begin with uh, some information regarding the origins of BLM. So uh, the Black Lives Matter organization was founded in 2013 by uh, Patrice Cullors, Opal Tometi, and Alicia Garza after the acquittal of George Zimmerman, who was accused of murdering Trayvon Martin. And uh, directly from their website, BLM states that its mission is one that seeks to eliminate white supremacy and push back against the violence that Black communities uh, have frequently been subjected to. Uh, and they also state that their mission is to eradicate white supremacy and to build local power to intervene in violence inflicted on black communities by the state and vigilantes. And uh, with that, they indicate that by combating and countering acts of violence uh, and creating space for black imagination and black joy, that they also state that their aim is to win immediate improvements in the lives of black people in America. So it's important to note that Black Lives Matter sees its mission as being uh, one that's towards those who identify as black within various groups, uh, such as transgender, queer, non-binary, incarcerated, and formerly incarcerated, and uh, women. Um, Black Lives Matter sees the inclusion of all expressions of Blackness as important in advancing their movement. And they state that uh, they are a collective of liberators who believe in an inclusive and spacious movement, and that in order to win and bring as many people along the way, that it's important to move beyond uh, what they see as a narrow nationalism that's all too prevalent in Black communities. And uh, with this point, it's important to note that the organization itself does not seek to align with any particular religion or religious organization. And so uh, within Black Lives Matter, the, this protest element is key to, to its movement. And there were protests uh, following many of the police killings that took place uh, after the death of Michael Brown in 2013. However, the, the death of George Floyd in 2020 set off numerous protests in the United States and abroad and also proved to be a turning point for BLM. And the hashtag, hashtag Black Lives Matter gained a constant presence on social media. And so on the next slide, I just have a few um, you see a few screenshots of just examples of how this hashtag uh, appeared on Twitter, Instagram, but yeah, Twitter and Instagram. And so there's been a lot of opposition uh, regarding BLM. Um, so Black Lives Matter has faced opposition due to its various uh, philosophical underpinnings. Uh, a lot of times the BLM organization has been painted as being a Marxist operation 
that's opposed to the traditional nuclear family. And some have also stated that it's seeking to dismantle this uh, traditional nuclear family, uh, which exists, uh, could, which consists of husband and wife and children. Um, and it, it, a lot of people say this because of the space that BLM provides for queer, transgender, and non-binary individuals in the movement. Um, and additionally, it's seen as uh, advocating for the abolition of the police. But BLM states that they argue for defunding police which means uh, reallocating funds that would be traditionally used uh, by the police, other agencies, rather than the complete abolishment of uh, a police. And so now I'm gonna go in to talk about the black church. You know, the black church in America has been instrumental in the fight for equality and against racism. And it was born out of protests. Um, so just for example, the AME church Foundation, Amy Church was founded uh, as a result of protests and as a result of discrimination. Um, so Richard Allen and Absalom Jones left St. George's Methodist Church in Philadelphia uh, because they were uh, being discriminated against and they were forced to sit in the balcony uh, rather than being able to sit amongst other members. And when they did this, they subsequently founded the Free African Society which gave birth to the African Methodist Episcopal Church, which is commonly known as the AME Church. And the AME Church was the first black denomination in the United States, and it was founded in 1816. So within the, the history of African Americans in America, spiritual life was an important part. And the church and church meetings often play uh, important roles in their society. And, it was a time to gather um, and also plan their freedom. So this was also, the church was also used as a means of, of, of protest and, and fighting for their own freedom. So there have been a number of uh, slave rebellions throughout history, but one of the most famous ones was Nat Turner's rebellion in 1831. And this is important because Nat Turner uh, was a preacher and he believed that his rebellion was inspired by God. And he often used, in the, in the planning of this rebellion, he used church meetings uh, to plan this rebellion. Um, and this rebellion took place in Virginia and it killed approximately 65 individuals, the majority of whom were white. Uh, and Nat Turner was subsequently captured and executed. And so just even looking at this, I'm kind of seeing that um, even Nat Turner's rebellion, uh, I guess can be tied to an early expression of the, the fact that, of the statement that black lives matter. And so later on, you know, black church began to grow in its social influence after emancipation. And so uh, during reconstruction, the church continued to advocate for the proper treatment of African-Americans. And so during this time, the black church continued to fight against lynching of African-Americans in the South while advocating for the value of the lives of African-Americans. So it, it also can be said at a basic level, this fight against the murder of, of African-Americans is an early expression of the statement that Black Lives Matter. Um, and the Black church played an important role in the civil rights movement as many organizations during this movement were rooted in the Black church. And uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who's arguably uh, the most famous civil rights leader was a Baptist preacher. King's idea of nonviolent protest was rooted in his Christian background. And it's important to note that uh, one of the primary arguments of the civil rights movement was that African-Americans deserve to be treated humanely and to have the same opportunities for advancement as whites, as the lives of African-Americans are as valuable as those of their white counterparts. And so just a note, uh, example of some of these uh, civil rights organizations that were rooted in the, the black church include the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and also uh, a movement rooted in the black church was the Montgomery uh, bus boycott, which was backed by the Black church as well. And so kind of moving forward, uh, this period after the death of Trayvon Martin saw an influx of voices that were rooted in the Black church, uh, but that were speaking out against uh, racial justice more frequently. So it's important to note that this time frame also coincides with the beginnings of, this Black, of the Black Lives Matter movement. And many of these voices that were speaking out saw white evangelicalism as not doing enough to affirm the value of black lives and in some instances also being complicit in the oppression of African-Americans. Um, 
And there were also some instances where the church as a whole, the Christian church as a whole, has been viewed as uh, not really providing a viable solution to these issues of racism, which has also caused some to leave uh, the Black church specifically in search of what they see as a better means of combating racism. And you know, to this point, you'll see people who may leave the church for traditional African uh, belief systems because they see the Black church as not doing enough. And then also, um, in some instances, um, coinciding with some of the, the racism that they've seen. Um, and so what I kind of saw with this is this can also kind of speak to the appeal of BLM as an organization in its early stages. And so with that, some also saw it as being a viable option for speaking out against racism in spaces, um, like I mentioned before, where they saw the church as not doing enough. And so just as a note, because this is important to any discussion of like civil rights and freedom movements and the black church, uh, just kind of talking about briefly black liberation theology. Uh, so it's important to mention uh, black liberation theology in this discussion as black liberation theology has often played a part in many of the social justice movements in the black church. A simple definition of black liberation theology states that it sees Christianity as a means of liberation for black people. And so James Cone in uh, his book, Black Theology of Liberation, expresses that black theology represents that community of blacks who refuse to cooperate in the exaltation of whiteness and the degradation of blackness. So it's important to note that, uh, important that this be expressed because this idea can be found behind the idea of a social justice gospel, which has often been found in the black Christian space and various freedom movements. And so Black liberation theology has often informed the ways in which many Black churches have sought to address uh, issues of racism. And so it should, it's important to note that uh, the reception of the Black Lives Matter movement and the Black Lives Matter organization by the Black church is one that's uh, quite nuanced. So um, there's often a distinction that's made between the statement that Black Lives Matter and the tenets of the Black Lives Matter organization. While many churches are gonna affirm the statement that Black Lives Matter, more conservative churches uh, are hesitant in supporting the Black Lives Matter movement or the organization. Uh, but this often depends on the church's uh, stance, whether or not it's theologically conservative or whether or not it's more liberal. So for example, a theologically conservative denomination, specifically uh, in the Black church, such as the Church of God in Christ, uh, which is commonly known as the Kojic denomination, is more likely to uh, be less likely, to, uh, for example, to be queer affirming than a church from uh, a black church that's from the United Church of Christ denomination. And so to this point, you'll see Black Lives Matter is gonna uh, find more support in a denomination such as the United Church of Christ, more so than a uh, Church of God in Christ due to the difference in you know, their theological stance. Um, and so on the next slide, I provided uh, just an example of a historically black church in Washington, DC from the African Methodist Episcopal denomination that uh, affirms the statement that black lives matter. And so here you'll see a tweet from Metropolitan AME Church in Washington, DC, uh, supporting black lives matter. And so for just a little bit of context, uh, Metropolitan AME is a historically black church in Washington, DC. And it's also a church where Frederick Douglass worshiped and Ida B. Wells spoke. So it has some, some deep roots in the freedom fighting, freedom fighting uh, movement. Um, and so in 2020, they had a Black Lives Matter flag outside of their church, which was actually burned uh, by the Proud Boys movement. Um, so you'll see their tweet. This was, I guess, probably a day or two after this flag was burned. They went on Twitter to affirm the statement that they believe that Black Lives Matter. Uh, so I, I wanted to take a look and see on their website whether there was anything more specific, uh, whether or not they actually affirm the tenets of the Black Lives Matter organization. Because like I said before, a lot of churches will affirm the statement that Black Lives Matter, but more will be hesitant to affirm the organization uh, and the tenets of the BLM organization. So, and just in looking at that, I did see that they 
place a heavy emphasis on social justice as they see uh, social justice as being an integral part of their religious experience. And so here's just a quote from their pastor, uh, Reverend uh, William H. Damar IV, um, where he just kind of talks about how he's affirming the necessity for social justice activism. And they see the church as being a vehicle for such activism. And so Reverend uh, Lamar states that our belief in God doesn't turn off or obstruct our senses to the injustices of the world. At Metropolitan African Methodist Episcopal Church, we seek to do the work of worship, liberation, and service together. We are deeply spiritual as detectives of the divine and deeply engaged as agitators and in the community, the nation and the world. And just kind of uh, going back to what I referenced before, the AME denomination itself is a denomination that has been historically rooted in social justice, justice activism. Uh, but they kind of like kind of go in the middle as far as their, whether or not they're liberal or conservative. Uh, they do have the social just, justice activism piece, but they're not, uh, for example, an LGBTQ affirming denomination. And so, I, like I said, I was trying to look on their website to see where they lean as far as whether or not they affirm the Black Lives Matter organization, but I couldn't really find anything. So I, I guess it's safe to assume that their, their stance is more so with the statement um, and the argument that Black Lives Matter. And so just kind of wrapping it up, um, I wanted to kind of take a look at Black Lives Matter today. So there's been a lot of uh, recent scrutiny faced by Black Lives Matter, and this has also affected the ways in which some have viewed the movement. Um, while you find, well, it, it, I guess kind of talking about some of the, the scrutiny there, uh, like Andre said, said before, there's uh, scrutiny about how they've allocated funds, whether or not those funds were allocated proper, properly, and then even some of the founders um, have at, had to answer for some of their extravagant spending. So this has kind of shaped how people have viewed the organization and whether or not they actually want to support it. Um, and then while you'll, you'll still find some Black churches out there that remain aligned to BLM, both as an organization and as a movement, uh, what you find more recently is that there's been uh, more of a distancing due to some of these issues. And then also uh, there are some churches who've changed their idea and they, they've kind of seen BLM as um, being more of an anti-biblical in their stances. And so I just kind of also wanted to uh, provide this tweet from a couple of days ago uh, from their official Twitter. And they, they're holding today actually a candlelight vigil for the victims of the mass shooting at the Topps Market in Buffalo, New York. And for those who may not be familiar with, with what happened, there was a mass shooter that went into the supermarket actually last Saturday and killed 10 African-Americans and injured three in, which, in what was a racially motivated act. So I wanted to include this just to highlight how they, they're still out there. They still uh, are active in spaces of activism, but just kind of emphasizing how they don't uh, tend to operate or don't want to operate with any specific religious organization um, because even this... Uh, candlelight vigil is, is just open to anyone. Um, and they're not naming any specific religious practice. But most importantly, I, I wanted to mention this just to kind of to bring to, to light uh, the fact that Black people are still subject to horrors of white supremacy. And so uh, while the Black church continues to be an important part of experiences of Blacks in America, uh, it's kind of important to mention that there's been this recent shift in some spaces away from Christianity as a means of social activism. And like I said before, you have some of the younger generations who've seen this Christian church or seen the Christian church as being complicit and not doing enough. And uh, the relationship between Black Lives Matter, both as an organization and as a statement and the Black church um, is one that's nuanced and only time will tell how it develops in the future. And I guess, Honestly, only time will tell whether or not the Black Lives Matter organization survives this recent uh, scrutiny. So uh, here are just some of the resources that I use for my presentation. And thank you. <laughs>